Hey guys, today we are back with episode number 21 of Truck History. On this episode, we will be going all the way back to 1897 with the amazing history of Autocar. But before we begin, if you've enjoyed our videos this far and you'd like to help us continue to create more content, please consider joining our Patreon community by visiting patreon.com slash show. Those of you who become patrons will be treated to a video VIP pass with exclusive early access to all new episodes of our brand new Trucking Culture series, including the White Line Fever feature flick we have coming, as well as receive free decals, t-shirts, and truck posters. Interested in becoming part of our Patreon? Please visit the patreon.com slash Show link in the description box below. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. One of the oldest truck manufacturing operations and earliest surviving vehicle nameplates in the U.S., Autocar, originally opened up in 1897 when Lewis Simple Clark built the all-new Autocar No. 1, which was a one-cylinder, gasoline-powered trike truck. Only one year later in 1898, another Autocar No. 2, also known as the Pittsburgher, was built but this time featured four wheels. Autocar also offered the first commercially available motor truck in the U.S. the next year in 1899, at the heart of the Industrial Revolution. These purpose-built autocars were produced with an engine under the seat design, debuted primarily for delivery purposes, and was declared to be safer than driving a horse. Skipping ahead to 1907, Autocar announced the launch of another all-new truck with the revolutionary model XV3. Early autocar engineering was incredibly innovative and led the industry to many breakthrough inventions that have become standard in trucks today, including circulating oil systems, porcelain insulated spark plugs, among other advancements. Autocar also aided in the First World War in 1914 by producing and providing the chassis for the armored auto car, which was created for the Canadian military. By 1919, the beloved auto car bow tie emblem was adopted and appeared for the first time on their trucks. Moving into the late 1920s, more severe service models were made for heavier hauling markets with the launch of a lot larger conventionals. Despite the economic downturn during the Great Depression, Autocar brought forth their beloved Blue Streak gasoline engines and also debuted their diesel engines, primarily produced by Cummins. Jumping into the next decade of the 1930s, 1933 saw the release of the Model U rig, which brought back the engine under the seat format that would eventually evolve into today's so-called cabover engines. At the end of the decade in 1939, Autocar also debuted their iconic DC model, produced as a premier, severe-duty, diesel-powered work truck. As the Second World War ramped up, the Autocar Model U rig was also adopted into the U.S. Army's lineup, launching Autocar to even more success. The Ultimate U8144T 5-6-ton truck was the largest, as well as the most heavy-duty four-wheel drive design developed for and deployed with the U.S. Army in World War II. And almost 3,000 of the unique U8144T trucks were built in total. Several smaller U-model vehicle variants were also made, including the U7144T, which was essentially the exact same as White's 444T truck. After supplying some 37,000 total trucks for the war, Autocar was ranked 85th among all corporations in the country in terms of production value after serving the Army well with a variety of rugged, reliable, military vehicle model variants. Civilian sales continued in 1944, and a little later on in 1950, 
An all-new, all-steel auto car driver cab was introduced, bringing a new era of innovations designed to improve operators' comfort and productivity. Three years later in 1953, auto car was acquired by the almighty White Motors Company, who moved production to a new factory in Exton, Pennsylvania, the next year in 1954. After being bought by White, in 1957, Autocar announced the all-new AP series. Introduced for extreme duty on and off-road applications, all while remaining focused on weight reduction, the Autocar AP40, for example, was the largest single-engine vehicle in the world. Another prominent product in the AP lineup was the AP19 truck, which sported a 900,000-pound GCW. After the amazing success of their AP models, the 60s and 70s also saw some of Autocar's biggest, baddest trucks ever put to work in the dirtiest, toughest, most rugged vocations imaginable. For example, Autocar came out with their CK-64 half cabs around this same time, which were used to carry concrete mixers and in many other construction capacities. Also later in 1977, the Constructor 2 truck was launched with White's Expeditor cab. In addition to wearing a cab created by White, three years later in 1980, Autocar's production plant was also moved to the more modern White manufacturing facility in Ogden, Utah. Shortly thereafter, in 1981, AB Volvo of Sweden acquired all of White Motor Company's assets, including the Autocar branding. This led to the creation of the Volvo White Truck Corporation, and eventually in 1986, the additional Volvo GM Heavy Truck Corporation, both of which thankfully still allowed Autocar to continue producing severe service semi-tractors under their own, custom-engineered company standard. For a short time in 1988, all Autocars adopted a white GMC logo on their grill, with the iconic autocar bowtie sported on the side of the hood. The bowtie soon, however, returned to the top of the radiator, and skipping ahead to 1997, autocar celebrated their 100th anniversary. Unfortunately, this celebration quickly came to an end a few years later in October of 2000, as Volvo produced their last all-new autocar. This wasn't the end for autocar, however, and in fact, a new evolution of Autocar was formed the very next year in 2001. After the GVW Group LLC acquired Autocar and also the white Expeditor model to make the new manufacturer Autocar LLC. After being brought back to life hours away from our home at Jack's Chrome in Hagerstown, Indiana, in 2003, Autocar decided to bring it back to the roots with the production of purpose-built, high-performance, severe-service semis. In 2008, Autocar announced the ACX Low Cab Over under the Expeditor model name, bringing quite a few firsts to the market, including a spacious and ergonomically designed cab, B-pillar corner rear windows, and integrated body controls. The Autocar ACTT, or X-Spotter, also exploded as it made its way into the market for terminal tractors. Serving a serious need for custom-engineered Class 8s, capable of delivering continuous, severe service duties. Later on in 2012, Autocar announced the introduction of the innovative ACMD, or Expert, America's only medium-duty cabover engine model. Designed by special request from several companies craving an American-made Class 7 vocational cabover truck, the ACMD debuted and has since expanded and evolved into even more Class 8 models. Recently in 2019, Autocar announced the rebirth of their cult classic DC Conventional with the release of their DC-64 truck. The DC-64 debuted as Autocar's fourth all-new addition to their already legendary lineup and was the first to feature Autocar's freshly updated Bowtie brand logo. 
after 121 years of innovation, Autocar remains both the oldest vehicle nameplate in America and the only truck manufacturer dedicated to severe duty vocational applications. That brings you up to date with the history of Autocar. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our live podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Be sure to buy your big rig the best chrome for your home with some beautiful brand new billet pedals for 15% off on our website at jackschromeshop.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Mm -hmm.